Okay, so welcome to the next uh, session, uh, which is going to be done by Jaka from Ljubljana. Yeah. Uh, Jaka, as I have been told, is a guitar player and programmer and uh, long-time Nix contributor yeah. working on systems stuff. And that's what he's going to talk about today. Yeah. So welcome everybody, Jaka. Um, hello. Uh, welcome to my talk about running uh, Kubernetes on XIS. Uh, uh, I'm Jaka and uh, we'll talk about why Nix and uh, Kubernetes are a great combination. Okay. So something about me, I'm, uh, as it says, I'm full stack engineering JavaScript, Python, C, and different other languages with experience in provisioning and some embedded devices and security. Um, lately, I'm mainly backend JavaScript uh, developer, uh, but I'm interested in a in wide uh, spectrum of IT fields. Uh, one day I'm fixing bugs of incompetent front-end developers and other days I'm doing some low-level hardware programming. So. so the projects I'm currently working is actually the first one is a startup called GitHub, and it's a new fintech platform for multi-currency payment trading and exchange. It's based on Ripple. Uh, we already got the CMOS and we are, um, and it's uh, uh, currently we are just releasing our new product um, that it that is for um, uh, mostly for enterprise users and uh, the other product uh, I'm, I'm making is uh, actually data driven distributed task automation and aggregation work uh, using graph databases and Docker containers and also Nix. Um, and this, uh, uh, this, this project is actually uh, making my free time and I also want to make a startup from it. So, and so when I started working on GitHub, uh, we decided that we want to split um, our infrastructure are in many multiple microservices. So we started to think uh, how, we, how can we deploy scalable infrastructure. Uh, our developers wanted to use our uh, Docker for development uh, and deployment. So uh, the, the questions were how, to, how and, but I still wanted to, to use NixOS and Nix packages for our deployments. So the, the, question I, uh, the questions I had were how to deploy scalable NixOS systems, how to deploy scalable apps on top of, uh, of, top of NixOS, uh, how to have reliable distributed storage and scalable monitoring. So we need, so I decided we need something like Cluster process manager, um, secure distributed overlay networking, load balancer, distributed and replicated storage, um, uh, sh schedule for different resources like power networking, storage, uh, and this all should be managed by some cluster manager and there should be some monitoring system uh, to actually see what's going on. Um, so. Um, to do everything, uh, we have to start with, with uh, 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 let's make an overview of what we have. So, um, the first thing um, is decision of which container service manager we will use. So, in that case, um, uh, we have different cho choices. One, one of the first is usage of system. It's not like container manager, but the, the, the main real difference is for container managers, they actually run processes in containers and for, um, uh, and for, uh, and for example, system also has this, uh, command called systemd and spawn that also runs, uh, process, processes in containers. 
And the other you uh, you all probably know is uh, Docker. Um, so main advantage of Docker is that it's um, user-friendly and provides hub of pre-made Docker app containers. It has two simple format for building containers. Um, and um, the idea behind Docker is that you run one app inside container, not the whole OS. Because if, for comparison, for example, with LXT uh, uh, Container Manager, where you usually run the, the whole OS in, in container, of course you can, I mean, whole OS, whole distro um, base image. Uh, of course, you can also do this with Docker and with other um, uh, container managers, but th th uh, that's not uh, how, how it should be done. Um, okay, the, the Rocket, I don't know much about Rocket. It's a new thing developed by CoreOS. Uh, it actually, uh, they define some f uh, some specification, declarative specification format for building, um, uh, for building images. And it's a bit different from Docker, but um, in, in a sense that you can, that it has, that it, that it, it, it's a bit different from Docker that it has more, uh, uh, you can specify more things uh, because uh, Docker has pretty much simple format for uh, building images and as I said, it's sometimes uh, too simple. Um, okay, and then we uh, let's go to the overlay networking. Why we need overlay networking? It's actually to connect all these services together across different machines we are running because we don't want to to statically type in all the IPs. We, ju uh, uh, we just want to spawn these services across anywhere in the cluster and they should connect to uh, all other services they need. So in that case, we have a few choices. We have Open we switch. Uh, so we will see later we use open we switch with uh, IPsec networking or across our cluster and then we have also some other ch choices that um, they are more uh, docker related for example this wave uh, that enable that, that simply enables to connect multiple machines and I think they also use now open we switch as a backend uh, core OS flannel not flannel flannel. Uh, that's um, they. Uh, Flannel is actually they. Uh, it's not as optimized as Open the Switch because Open the Switch has uh, a kernel uh, a kernel support, so it's actually uh, really low latency. And with Flannel, you can uh, uh, there is a bit more latency because it's running in user space and. Um, uh, so in that sense, it's slower, but it connects to uh, um, etcd. Etcd is uh, distributed co uh, configuration storage. So whenever a new machine comes to a network, it automatically connects to this uh, distributed networking. Uh, and um, um, the Docker is now working on lib network. And it's not uh, as developed as other alternatives. So um, to to be actually able to run our services across different machines, we need to uh, to have some kind of storage that's remotely available or uh, available on demand on specific server. So in that sense. Uh, we, we have a choice of different distributed file systems uh, like Ceph, GlasserFS, and ExtremeFS, uh, and also in cloud solutions like Amazon Elastic Box Storage. Uh, in NixOS, currently, uh, there is a model for ExtremeFS uh, that uh, Matei C was working on, and um, I don't know how well does it work. Uh, we still need, uh, I would really like to have an XS model for SAP or GlasterFS that's uh, better supported by cluster managers like Kubernetes and also Docker now. Um, 
And then let's move to class managers that we can choose from. Uh, the first I will talk more about later is uh, Google Kubernetes and the others I will describe now. Uh, the, the, the second one is Cora as Fleet. So uh, a Fleet is actually a cluster manager that's managing uh, system D services across a cluster. It's, uh, it was actually, I think, developed before uh, Docker was even so popular. Uh, so, oh, but it's not so much uh, developed now. So, um, it's really nice because you can spawn um, uh, system day services uh, across the cluster, and also um, probably Nix Nix could use it. Um, the, the third one is Docker Swar uh, Swarm. So. Um, so Docker is usually running as a single service that that manages your containers on a single host. But if you use Docker Swarm, it actually um, uh, distrib distributes uh, uh, containers to many different nodes that are connected to to it. So it actually exposes the same API, API as. Um, Docker, but uh, but uh, it can communicate with many uh, machines, and then you have um, uh, Do uh, actually Doc is not here a cluster manager. It's but I still uh, 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 put it on the list. It's actually um, like an open source Heroku written in Bash, and it's um, it's really nice if you want to deploy. Uh, some sim simple application, um, and then with the last we have Rancher. Uh, Rancher is a solution on on its own. It's actually also using Docker, and it's actually providing its own overlay networking. They they have pretty nice UI, but I actually spoke with uh, the guys from Rancher and asked if uh, because their solution could only we start from Docker and then they provision everything. And I asked them if uh, if they could uh, like provide an instructions how to to deploy it separately on the machines, and they uh, don't have this in plan right now. So, uh, but it would be really nice to see Rancher. What? Uh, Mesos, yeah. Maybe I forgot about Mesos here. Yeah, also. So, yeah, um, Mesos actually, um, but uh, Mesos, uh, Mesos uh, is actually uh, also a class manager that can work with uh, spawning uh, not only containers but processes uh, uh, and, uh, among uh, the cluster. And but it doesn't have built-in uh, like support for networking and storage and stuff like that. But it's uh, it's really nice distributed scheduler. It's, uh, and for example, what would be nice to see is, for example, for Hydra task, for example, use Mesos. That's one nice use case because all other cluster managers are more for running applications, but for example, Mesos is more for running, like I would say tasks, but it can uh, be used for different things. But you have many more available here on this link. It's actually, if you Google how to run, how to scale Docker containers in production, you find a long list of uh, these solutions. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk, let's say something about Docker and Nix. Um, so Docker is primarily used for running application, not the whole distros. Um, and of course, running Nix inside Docker is easy. Uh, a few benefits here we have compared to other Docker images is that you can pick the exact version of Nix and exact versions of packages because, for example, um, if you if you use some other images like I don't know Debian or Ubuntu, you can just select the uh, which which rev rev uh, revision of this uh, use and here you can actually uh, pick the, the the commit you want like of course you can add a channel and then install whatever you want and yeah it's really simple we uh, i just 
Uh, I actually just pushed a new Nix, uh, a Nix image for Nix uh, 110. And um, so you can pretty much easily make a Docker image and run it. So um, you can try this yourself. I will not run this now. Um, oh, OK. This slide. Uh, so what about running NixOS in Docker? Uh, as I said, um, Actually, you can run XIS inside Docker containers using privilege mode, um, but you actually don't want to do that um, because Docker was not meant for that, and um, that's actually more for if you want to like test uh, or develop on XIS, and you wouldn't do this in production. Um, now working, I was working on service abstraction layer that would actually abstract the services and provide a way to run uh, uh, that you would be able to make like an XIS config and then build uh, and then make a separate container for every service and run it this on cluster. But currently I have different things to do, so it's not in my priority list, but um, I think it, it, it would be a nice thing to do to actually separate services from NixSize because NixSize is currently a quite monolithic uh, uh, system that... Um, yeah. So now, now, let's, now let's go to Kubernetes. Um, it's actually open sourced and announced by Google in 2014 and influenced by Google's Borg system. It's written in Go, um, like actually most of these things I showed you before is that they are like written in Go. So um, because, uh, mainly because Go allows to actually pretty easily build static uh, static binaries and distribute them uh, any, any, anywhere. So that's also a Google's approach currently how they're deploying stuff. Um, so uh, Kubernetes uses Docker uh, as primary process manager, but also has support for Rocket. So you can make a Rocket image and run it in system D. And I think uh, Garbas was also working on making, uh, also wrote uh, an article how to build a rocket image. So maybe we could try and run it with Kubernetes. So um, Kubernetes has a lot of commits, I would say, a lot of contributors, uh, because mainly because it's supported by Google and um, it's currently for uh, for a pretty long time in stable release uh, from the summer somewhere. Um, so what does uh, uh, Kubernetes provide? It provides replication. So um, uh, it actually manages Docker containers across multiple machines. It provides load balancing. So it has built-in load balancer. Um, that uh, that uh, balances traffic across all the replicated services. Um, it uh, integrates with distributed storages like EBS, Ceph, GlassRFS, NFS. Now uh, they added support for uh, this fiber file system. Um, and th there are also some other uh, storages like Git and secret storage, so you can put secrets and stuff like that. Um, it has supports for resource quota, so you can say, okay, this uh, this process, I, I only allow this process to take this much of RAM and this much of processing power. It has built-in support for logging and monitoring, and it has a declarative configuration for, for uh, actually for everything. Um, so, Kubernetes consists of many components, and these are separated in microservices. Uh, and uh, here is the description of them. The, the first one is API server. It's HTTP uh, API service 
uh, that with on which you connect and control uh, Kubernetes, and the changes they made are applied by control manager, um, scheduler, uh, Kubernetes scheduler, scheduler resources. Uh, resources like servers, so it decides where to put some containers, and uh, and uh, to and it also now has support for allocating a storage. So we have, if you have a pool of storage, it it can allocate it. But it currently this only works on in Google Cloud. Uh, it, then it has a proxy service. It's like load balancing proxy across uh, for um, all the services we expose, and it of course has uh, this uh, 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 kubelet that's actually running the containers themselves. So uh, it's ma it manages containers and reports on uh, on containers. Okay, so he, here is the the schema. So you usually run one master with, on which you have deployed uh, API server, scheduler, control manager. Okay, we have also here hipster. It's actually a monitoring service for all uh, for all these things. Um, and then then you have many uh, they called minions. So many uh, worker nodes where you have this key proxy that uh, for lo uh, load balancing. Uh, kubelet for running services and also a, a DNS service. So they also integrate with this uh, DNS called SkyDNS uh, that provides you DNS service for all the uh, applications you run on Kubernetes. Uh, okay, now my, about some terms they use. Uh, so namespace is a separate group for pods, replication controllers, and services. So you can have, like, for example, development and production namespace. It actually doesn't provide a physical separation be between uh, um, containers themselves. Um, it only provides uh, uh, logical. One, so, for example, one, one container can still c communicate with other container, if uh, but uh, you can actually write your own firewall plugin that that would prevent this. Then the, there is a minion that's a worker node, a pod. Uh, they in a Docker world you usually one uh, run one container and then you can attach multiple containers together. Here, actually, uh, you can run a set of containers on a single host, and they actually share the same networking namespace. So um, uh, that's that's pretty nice, and they actually can share the file system between these containers. Um, then you have replication controller. Um, replication controller is a controller for gr gr uh, for a gr uh, group of pods, and you can say. Um, okay, I want to um, uh, to deploy this the, the, these pods, uh, and I want to make uh, uh, this many replicas. So it uh, and uh, rep uh, and you define this in replication control. We will see example later. And then uh, a service is a load balancer for a group of pods that's um, running on uh, Kubernetes. Okay, so. Maybe let's make a demo. Okay, so what we will do here is actually um, uh, we will deploy on. Uh, oh, it doesn't show everything. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Uh, so we will deploy. Uh, here we have our application controller. So um, what we will make here is uh, we will deploy two Nginx containers. Um, no. that's, uh, okay, so let's do this. Okay, so I, I actually already have this deployed, but I can, um, Okay, now first let's get replication controller. So we already can see that we have replication controller with of Nginx with two replicas. Um, but we can delete this. Uh, 
Okay, so it now uh, deleted a replication controller. Um, I can see that now. And now we made create with this file we have on the top. It's uh, nginx controller. Okay, so now we can see it's running one replication controller, and this replication controller is running two pods. One is one is has already started, the other is almost started. So now both are running. Um, yeah. Actually, maybe if I just make curl, it would be just fine. Uh, so it uh, because I said that these are exposed by DNS, so I can just make. Uh, a curl like uh, nginx. Oh yeah, I forget something. We also have a service. We also have to expose this. So I already have a uh, service available, but I can delete it, of course. And uh, nginx service. Um, and I can actually go to the next slide that shows the service. Um, uh, so here is. Um, Maybe just describe this. So here we have a service uh, that's, uh, that selects all the um, all the pods that, that have label app nginx, and it exposes port 8000. Um, and uh, the target ports on the container is port 80. Um, so let's do this. Um, okay, now we have a service available. It it has its IP dedicated, uh, so um, it's uh, every machine has to have uh, IP space uh, for for these services and for pods. Okay, so now let's do this curl. Nginx service echo default echo. Ah. <laughs> Come on, In just a second. <laughs> Probably I have DNS problems. Yeah. I actually usually have different DNS server. Let's see if now works. No, still not working. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the different port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it it's a wrong port. It's eighty eighty. Thanks. 80,000, not 80. Oh, yeah. So here is Nginx responding, and it's load balancing between these two pods that are uh, running. Uh, if you would have m multiple machines, it would uh, run this, uh, uh, these pods across multiple machines, so it load, uh, so it provision them on different machines. Um, um, that's what um, scheduler does. Okay, of course, here we have some additional commands. We can also have, get the logs of a, of container that's running in our cluster. We can access uh, some uh, command inside container and also have a shell to this container. But um, okay, now now about running Kubernetes on XIS. Uh, I created an XS model um, and it is deployed in production for a longer period of time. I actually been testing this for uh, quite a long of time. I, I think from version uh, uh, 0 0.6 and now it's uh, now we have version 1.0. 1, 1 so actually not the latest uh, stable release which is 1.1 .1, but um, that's also what of most other distros have, and it's actually to to actually deploy it. It's actually just a few lines of Nixis config. 
So what you have to do, it's like make a bridge interface. You have to make, uh, to make this your server to be a rows of master and node and to actually just define the docker where, uh, on which interface that it should use this interface. So in that case, CBR0 interface. So you here don't, you don't see enable, that's because uh, with these roles you already define that each kind of should uh, be enabled, but I will probably change this. So you, you will have to explicitly enable it, but currently you just uh, define of roles uh, of services. Uh, you can, all, of course, also enable the, uh, the different components separately. This is just a shortcut with these dot roles where you define master and, and uh, node. Yeah. Um, so, but that's running only on a single node. Um, for production environments, we need a list, of, a list cluster of three machines, uh, and one of which has to be a, a, a master and also a, a minion node, so also worker. And that's because usually in production, um, uh, uh, Kubernetes depends on ETCD. Uh, it's ETCD is this configuration storage, and if we ha if you want to run it reliably. We uh, have to uh, to have a quorum of uh, to be at least two of three machines running, uh, so that three machines kind of make a cluster um, that you can run in production. And you also, of course, need to have an overlay networking thing. So these machines have to be connected somehow and have rootable subnets. So actually, in Kubernetes, every machine gets. Uh, uh, gets its own subnet and um, and um, so services that are deployed on different machines can talk together um, and uh, have different IPs that are routable to different servers based on IPs. <laughs> Uh, so, in our case, on GitHub, we do it uh, on uh, Amazon AWS instances. Uh, and we have virtual private cloud. Um, and on top of that virtual private cloud, we are running uh, open with switch uh, connected with IPsec because, um, because we don't just run instances on Amazon, but also on Hetzner. Uh, and with Hetzner, we, uh, because we are communicating over the internet, we need some kind of secure communication, then that's because uh, that's why we have uh, IPsec links. Um, yeah, then we uh, deployment is with NixOps, uh, Elastic Box Storage, uh, and then we have separated production and development namespace. And here is uh, just high level overview how it looks like. Um, so a couple of minions uh, connected, uh, and then we have Amazon, Amazon Load Balancer. That's load balancing the traffic to uh, to the servers and open with switch uh, overlay networking uh, connecting all these instances. Um, maybe just a bit about monitoring. We use Collecta for metric segregation, Inflexible for metric storage, Grafana and dashboard as uh, dashboard for metrics visualization, uh, Bosun for alerting. Yeah, as it says. Um, it's actually, we are currently using Bassoon for alerting because uh, there is, I haven't found any better component, but Grafana will get in an next release support for alerting. So this would be really nice because then you would just have to run Influxdebug, Grafana and some uh, service like Collecta that, uh, that uh, collects the logs and um, um, that would be it. Um, configuration. Actually, I will not show how to deploy a multi, um, uh, how to deploy cluster now. But actually, I have open, I have available set of profiles, so you can include this into your NixOS configuration. And I have something like profiles.kubernetes.enable true, 
And for example, profiles dot open we switch enable true and it will um, and with a bit of options you uh, you pretty simple configure all the system. Why I don't want to use bear uh, NixOS config because um, I reuse this um, this configuration in in different deployments. So uh, and I don't want to uh, duplicate my code. So I have developed a set of profiles. Um, that uh, I can reuse in different deployments, but of course, and it's still a better uh, documentation. <laughs> so that that's about it. Um, I think it's already time, right? Yeah. Um, for questions. Right, thank, yeah, you. thank you. Um, so, uh, so you do a, at which point when you deploy to um, when you build images, Docker images, right? Yeah. But, yeah. When yeah. you build Docker images, um, you insert, you include the whole closure uh, inside the image, so they can be moved around. Yeah, currently, uh, but yeah. but we are working on. On having distributed like Nix storage that uh -huh. would be which is mounted and across yeah that yeah. that's the idea but uh, uh, we are not there yet yeah, but yeah. yeah that's that's the idea uh, and this would be really awesome yeah. okay I just don't see, uh, for me it's like really you really need a big scale to uh, benefit from all this big setup like you need to really have a good problem to solve this to have this big setup. I mean, it's just uh, I mean, for us, it's easier because what's, what's the size? We we are running around ten Amazon instances, around twenty microservices replicated, um, and then we also have like support services like GitLab, like Sentry, like. Um, uh, and uh, Grafana, Elasticsearch, a lot of stuff. So, and actually, if if I would have to deploy all this by, I actually, for example, GitLab is just deployed with with image available on Docker Hub because uh, because it's, this was much easier, quicker way. So, it this setup actually enables you to run Nix services and also the other and and it enables us to later scale or replace it with a full nix setup so yeah. i was just curious on that topic with the copying the closures into the yeah. other containers how big you know are you seeing your 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 containers being like you know for your nginx container for example oh nginx um I don't know how how big is it. It's uh, it's 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 an X closure size plus a few ten megabytes maybe. Okay. So it's 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 not a it's not a big container. Uh, the bigger problems are other services. For example, we have a lot of Node.js packages that could be really big in size. So if they have a lot of dependencies, this becomes. Has that ever been a a problem in actuality, or is it just kind of a? Uh... Um, actually, we had uh, we had problems with storage uh, because uh, because when we updated it, we uh, if we yeah if we updated it, and do, uh, for example, especially for node packages. Uh, if you updated a Docker Docker file, Docker description file, and you update the version, it will uh, rebuild the whole image with all dependencies, and it will be a different hash. Mm. And then you you have a lot of if you have a lot of updates, uh, it will just fill the disk space. So now we actually have a garbage collector that runs every day and cleans the all Docker images. So it is a problem in uh, like distributed storage with. Uh, Nix would be a really nice solution here. Okay. 
Can you tell a little bit more about how the VPN works or the about? Op open V switch? The ah, open V switch between Amazon and Hetzner and stuff. Uh, so open V switch is uh, virtualized a switch that uh, it's integrated. Uh, I mean, some of the, uh, it's integrated in Linux kernel. So what it actually provides is to actually to simply create. Uh, uh, virtualized networking, but so we could say software-defined networking between machines. We are not using all the features of, of it, but it provided us with actually not so easy setup of uh, encrypted tunnels. We could also probably use just GRE tunnels, so it's like uh, and uh, IPsec integrated directly in Linux, but. Uh, I actually decided to use Open v switch because it uh, kind of uh, 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 it, it has better support for our routing. We could do firewalling in some sense with it, so we can actually limit communication between different containers uh, in a cluster. So in that sense, Open v switch. Uh, uh, you, uh, yeah. it, it integrates IPsec or. I mean, uh, IPsec is used is it's, in, it's in Linux the, kernel. It's part of kernel. Okay, and the configuration between the different servers is that manual or? Can uh, current, okay. yeah, yeah, currently, currently we have we deploy uh, the configuration. It's static. It's generated by by NixOps. So when I deploy it, and if I, I add another server, actually it reconfigures or. All, all, all of uh, all the other servers to uh, provide this mesh networking between machines. Okay, cool. So we, we need a better solution to actually be able to spin up servers just without Nix ops, um, because um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks.